We're now speaking with Mr. John Moore, who is Head of Global Sales for ATR. Thank you so much for sitting with me today. It's a pleasure. You, you're busy with a huge tour of the United States market. Yes. You're reintroducing the airplane to the U.S. market. Can you tell us about the tour and, and what you're doing with the airplane? Sure, yeah. So, good morning. It's John Moore, and uh, we've brought an ATR 72600 here to the U.S. and to Canada also, and we're doing a tour and visiting various uh, airlines here in this market. And our objectives really are to show the, the latest version of the ATR, which is really has a number of significant improvements compared to previous versions, and really show the U.S. airlines and the U.S. market what this aircraft can do. We've also made some developments on the product itself to suit it specifically for the U.S. market and U.S. airlines. And so we've brought some 3D uh, devices and some other ways to really demonstrate what we're doing with this airplane and how it can be adapted and, and modified really to suit the U.S. airlines and their requirements. So that includes a forward passenger door. We've also configured it with a three abreast first class seating and a premium seating so that they can really offer the same level of product and service that they're doing today with their uh, larger regional jets. So when you talk about regional jets, the target replacement then would be the CRJs and the ERJs in the 50 seat, the 50 seat segment? Yeah, what we see in the U.S. market is that there's a large fleet of smaller 50-seat RJs, which are relatively difficult and uneconomic on the shorter routes, and also they're starting to age and getting older and more expensive to operate. There's also a large fleet of turboprops still operating in the U.S., which are also, you know, on average, uh, more than 15 to 20 years old. So those aircraft are prime candidates for a replacement in the future as well. And with this aircraft. With the ATR 72, we can offer a product which is very economic, much lower cost than those uh, RJs, and a much higher level of service. So they can really attract their premium passengers and offer the same level of service that they're offering with their larger aircraft in those markets. So the, the, we just went on a test flight, and the airplane is remarkably quiet. It's really phenomenal. Uh, one has to be on board to, to, to sense how yes. quiet it is. But you have a 72-seater that you're pitching at, in the market as a 50-seater. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how that works? Sure, yeah. The, uh, the ATR has been very successful around the world, and the 72 in particular has been a bestseller. And the standard configuration is in the range of 70 to 72 seats, so you have a very good uh, economics and low cost per seat on that aircraft. For the U.S. market, uh, there's a number of other factors that are figuring into the requirements and what the airlines are looking for. One aspect is with the pilot scope clause, they have certain limitations on the number of aircraft they can operate at different size categories. And we see that the segment of the 50 seat and under category is one where there's a real need for an improved uh, standard and an improved product to replace these existing aircraft, which I spoke about earlier. So we've configured the ATR-72 in a 50-seat configuration with, as I mentioned, you know, a three abreast dual class, really nice, comfortable cabin. So as you mentioned, you know, the, the aircraft is a cabin class aircraft, very comfortable, low noise, low vibration. And with this type of a layout, they can offer a superior product to their airlines. So that's really the segment of the market that we're targeting at this stage. But in the future, of course, the aircraft could be upgraded and they could put more seats into it if they have more flexibility within their limitations that they have with the scope and the size of the aircraft. So currently you have the cargo in the front and now you're proposing a door in the front and the cargo will move to the back of the cabin. That's right. Yeah, the forward passenger door is another criteria that the U.S. airlines are really requiring for their aircraft, so this aircraft can be configured with a forward door, and we can add more stowage and more baggage space in the rear of the cabin, uh, so that there'll be ample checked uh, stowage for checked bags, and then of course we've made big improvements on the overhead bins now, the overhead bins can take a standard roller bag, uh, so about two-thirds of the passengers can put their roller bags in the overhead bins, and so it's good baggage uh, capability with this aircraft compared to the older versions of the ATR. Last question. If you decide to go with the front door, will that be for the U.S. market exclusively or would that be available to any airline? The forward door would be an option basically that would be available to anybody. I think uh, it's something that we've done in the past with the ATR and uh, it, it wasn't as popular as the rear door, but going forward, the forward door would be available as an option and it could be configured that way for any other airlines in other parts of the world that were looking for that type of uh, configuration as well. So it's available or could be available to anybody else. So far we haven't seen an interest in that or a demand for that in other parts of the world, but uh, you know, it's certainly an option for them, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.